So now we know a little bit about evolution. We know a little bit about gene pools. So let's talk a little bit more about what we know statistically about a gene pool. So in your lab book, one of the major things you're going to be conquering in this unit is determining what the frequencies are of alleles and genotypes. So we're kind of, again, putting a whole lot of things together. So remember back in lab 10, we talked about frequencies. We talked about probability. We're going to kind of play on that here. Um, Alleles are types of genes, so we have different types of genes, and then genotypes are the you know, number of those genes. How many of those genes do we have? So remember, everyone has two alleles. Those alleles can then give us three different genotypes. So we're going to kind of use a lot of that terminology we've been building on for the past couple of weeks months at this point. <laughs> um, so let's look at an example so that we can walk through how we determine allele and genotype frequencies. So this is the example that's in your lab book, which is we have 150 total individuals in this population. 16 of them are homozygous dominant, meaning you could write them as big A, big A, or big R, big R, depending on which letter you like to use. Uh, we have 98 heterozygotes, which means they have a dominant and a recessive gene, so you can write them as big A, little a. And then you have 36 individuals who are homozygous recessive, meaning they are little a, little a. Uh, these are a given and known population. Okay, so whenever we are given a population, we can very simply just figure out how many alleles and how many you know genotypes are actually in this population. Um, this is going to be known data. So if you're ever given in these numbers, this, these are the equations that you're going to be using. So the frequency equations here are much like the probability equations that we looked at before. You can think about these as the percentage of the population, which I think is, is easier for me to think about. So the frequency of the dominant allele is simply calculated by taking the number of all the dominant alleles and divide that by the total number of alleles. So again, remember allele does not equal individual. Every individual has two alleles. So if we have 150 individuals in this population, that means each one of them has two. So you have to take two alleles times that 150 to give us 300 alleles. So this population has 300 alleles. Now the next thing that we have to do is figure out how many dominant alleles are here and how many recessive alleles are here. So how many dominant alleles do we have? Well, we have to take two things into consideration here. One, we have to think about homozygous dominance having two of these dominant alleles, right? Each one has two big A's. But we also have to remember that the heterozygotes have one each. Okay, so the simple setup for this is that you have to take 2 times the homozygous dominance, which is 16, so 2 times the 16, because each one has 2, and then we have to add the heterozygotes, because they each have one dominant allele, they each have one big A. That gives us 130 alleles that are dominant. So to find the frequency, we just have to divide that by the total. Right, so that is 130 divided by 300, which gives us a frequency of 0.43, or what you could say is 43%. So 43% of the alleles that are in this population are going to be dominant. Now the recessive alleles, we can do the same thing. All right, we can do the same thing, only we are going to be using the homozygous recessives instead of the homozygous dominance. So let's look at that. Same equation, we're just looking at the number of recessive alleles divided by the total. So how many recessive alleles do we have? Two for every homozygous recessive, again, because every homozygous recessive has two recessive alleles. And then every heterozygote has the recessive allele as well, so we have to add that in there. This gives us a total of 170 alleles that are recessive. So we do that math, 170 divided by 300, that gives us a 0.57. Now, if you remember back to the probability lab we did a couple of weeks ago, the probability lab told us that all the sum of all the probabilities within one set has to equal 1. So here we just had 0.57 uh, plus the 0.43. If you add those two together, that will equal 1. This is an amazing way to check your math and we will feed into something we'll use a little bit later.
So the next thing we need to talk about is the genotypes. So the genotypes I think is easier than the alleles because we've already been given that. We have the three genotypes. They're 16, 98, and 36. So for this, we just have to divide by the total population, which again, we already have is 150. So to find the homozygous dominance, we just need to take those 16 big A, big A's and divide that by 150 total individuals to give us a 0.1 or sorry, yeah, 0 0.107, here we go, 10.7% of this population is homozygous dominant. Same thing we're going to do for the heterozygotes. We're going to take 98 of them divided by the total of 150, which gives us 0.653 or 65.3%. And then you have your homozygous recessive. Same thing, 36 divided by 150, which gives you the 0.24 or 24%. Again, you can add these three up and it will equal one, I promise. Now, if you wanna see more about the math, see the like chalkboard to whiteboard I used in one of the other videos uh, to actually use some practice here. So check out those videos as well if you want a little bit more help with the math. So now the next thing that we need to talk about here is what's called the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Um, this equilibrium it basically states that uh, hypothesis, the hypothesis is that evolution didn't happen in a certain population. So we're gonna test this, right? We're gonna push this to the max. Uh, we are gonna do a couple of experiments where we um, mess with some of the assumptions of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So if the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium says that evolution didn't happen, that means some of those things we talked about in the first video can't happen. Um, these are the, the assumptions, right? So there are five assumptions for Hardy-Weinberg. Basically, again, those five things that I mentioned earlier can't happen. Mutations cannot happen. Selection cannot happen. Gene flow cannot happen. Ra random mating is happening instead of choosing your mate. And we have to have a larger population size, uh, which means we can't have that like bottleneck effect that we discussed in that first video. So if none of these things happen, then evolution can't happen. Now we're going to see some cases where, well, these things happen. Um, and we're going to mimic some of these as well. So the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium also comes with a little bit of math. Um, so there are um, some equations that can be used to help us determine how many different alleles and um, genotypes are within a population. So if we only know one thing, then we can find them, them all out, basically. And so this equilibrium will not be used if I give you a whole population. So if you're given a whole population, you will not be using these equations. But if you only know one thing, then these are the equations that you're gonna need to be using. Um, so there are two equations here. One is for the allele frequency. So we have the allele frequency calculation, which is simply P plus Q equals one. P is the number or the frequency of dominant alleles. Q is the frequency of recessive alleles. We kind of just did this. When I said add them all up and make sure it equals one, right, that is what we just did. Um, so this is for the alleles. Now the genotype is a little bit more complicated just because there are three of them, right? So this equation is P squared plus two PQ plus Q squared is equal to one. Now, don't let this freak you out too, too much, all right? You're not going to have to whip out the quadratic formula to solve this or anything. We're just going to use this as our proportion. So the P squared is going to be the frequency of the homozygous dominance genotype. 2PQ is the heterozygotes. And then the Q squared is the frequency of the homozygous recessive uh, genotype. So again, there are some videos uh, in this playlist that are going to walk you through how to use these a little better. I'm going to go through one and two examples right now um, to help you feel a little bit more comfortable, but I'll definitely encourage you to go look at those, um, those videos so that you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with this. So again, I'm going to give you one piece of information and you're going to have to find them all. So the example is I'm giving you the homozygous recessive frequency is 16%. Remember all percentages should be converted into decimals for this. So make sure you're good. You remember how to convert those. Be really careful with some of them. So that means that our Q squared, so if you look back at that equation, our Q squared is 0.16. So if I have Q squared, Q is proportional to that. Like Q, the Q in that first equation is proportional to this Q squared. Um, so Q would just be undoing the Q squared. 
So the square root of q squared will give you q. So the square root of 0.16 is 0.4, which means q is 0.4. Now once you have q, you can find p. That one's easy. Okay, so p, one, so p plus q equals 1, right? So if q is 0.4, that means p is 0.6. So we have p. Now we can do p squared. So p squared would be 0.6 squared, which will be 0.36. So p squared is 36%. And then the last one looks the most complicated, but it's really not. <laughs> um, you take 2 times p times q. So 2 times 0 0.6 times 0.4 gives us 0.48. Now again, you can double check your math here. Okay, so in this example, we know that the dominant allele is 60%. The recessive allele is 40%. The homozygous dominant is 0.36 or 36%. Heterozygo is 48%. And then the homozygous recessive frequency is 16%, which is what we started with. Now, again, remember, you can add all these together, double check your math, uh, and make sure that it does equal 1 or really close to 1. Some of these end up with a little bit of rounding as we go through them. So to look at this a little bit differently, um, I'm taking this from Dr. O'Grady, so you can thank her for it. Um, if we have P and Q, we know P plus Q equals 1, right? So in this example, P is 70% or 0.7. So if we know P is 0.7, then we can plug that into our equation that tells us Q is 0.3, right? Again, add those together and that will equal 1. So from this, we can then calculate our genotype frequencies, right? So the genotype frequencies are our P squared, which is P times P or P squared, right? Um, which is 0.49 in this example. The 2PQ is 2 times the P times the Q, which is 42% here. And then the Q squared is our 0.3 squared, which is 0.09. And again, add these all together and that should equal one. So this, again, check out the other videos. You can actually watch me walk through all of the math for each one of these, do a couple of different examples because the review sheet for this lab contains a lot of these problems where we will give you one percentage and you will then have to figure out the rest of them or at least most of them. So make sure that you understand how to get from one step to the other. Um, basically, in my opinion, as long as you can get to P or Q, so some somehow get back to P or Q, um, you can find out the rest very, very quickly. So if I give you P squared, you go to P and then you can go to Q and then you can find out the rest, right? It'll follow and the practice makes perfect on this one. So do make sure that you are practicing uh, these equations so that you're feeling really comfortable heading into your homework, quizzes, and exams.